One of the first things that coaches recommend to climbers who want to get better at climbing is to climb more often. However, they also tend to follow up this recommendation with a, but don't climb too often. And the reason for this is the likelihood of getting injured when you're climbing every single day for five hours a day is pretty high compared to those climbing three to four days per week with two to three hour sessions. I've tested 18 different methods to help your body handle additional climbing. Included in this video, I'm going to walk you through three methods to decrease muscle soreness, three things helped prevent me from getting pumped while I was climbing, three methods that prevent tendon injuries, three methods to improve muscle building, one method for overall muscle, tendon, and body well-being, two methods for skin repair, as well as two things that are heavily marketed but way more hype than they are helpful. Muscle soreness is really something that can make you feel like you don't want to go climbing because you're just so sore. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to get out of bed when my muscles are so sore. So here are three things that we can do to prevent that soreness. The first one on my list is called warm cold shower. This is something you can do after climbing where you start off with a room temperature or slightly warm water, get it into your system, and then you slowly increase it to super cold water until you are kind of in that shock cold water and you stay in there for about five minutes minutes. And it's similar to the science of cold showers, which has the benefits of added circulation to your system. So you're going to decrease the muscle soreness, similar outcome, but it's much more comfortable. Next on my list actually saved my butt. I tried acupuncture. It's been done for millions of years as a way of decreasing pain. It uses pressure points and then your nerves, once they realize that you're not in danger, your body starts to decrease the sensitivity of your nerve endings. I didn't want to go and pay for acupuncture every time that I had pain. We ended up finding this bed of nails, which is a mat full of these like hypoallergenic needles that look kind of like the bottom of a golf shoe. 485 needles or something like that on one of these. It doesn't actually penetrate your skin. It's just enough pressure where it has a similar effect. So you'd lay on this for about 15 minutes. When I first started using this, it was painful. Like I couldn't handle it. You're supposed to use it without any clothing on. So your skin to skin contact. I was having having serious psoas pain and nothing was working until I tried acupuncture. So if you're using this on a nightly basis, you're really going to decrease those sore muscles. Next is cupping and cupping draws stagnant fluids towards the surface, assisting with detoxification and it brings in fresh nutrient rich blood. Cupping provides a gentle sustained stretch for loosening tight muscles, connective tissue adhesion, and it clears heat or inflammation. I was actually sent a really cool cupping mechanism that is electronic. Typically when you go to a professional, they're like glass and you use a flame to take out the oxygen and then you suck it on. Or there's also these plastic cups where they like pump out the air so that the suction comes. This one's really cool and that it's electronic so it can do pulses if you want. You can increase or decrease the pressure. So if you want a heavier cupping, then you increase the pressure. I actually like this device enough that I'm making another video for it on my website, sendedition.com. So definitely check that out if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description below. It does kind of leave like a bruised area look. If you watch Michael Phelps, for example, he's really famous for having lines of big circles on the back of them, that's from cupping. Let's talk about preventing pumping. Pumping, if you aren't familiar, is when you're climbing and your forearms start to swell and it's so firm that it's hard to grip. Well, that's actually from a buildup of lactic acid in your forearms. Lactic acid is caused from a lack of oxygen in your blood flow. Two of these methods I was actually really surprised about and one of them I was familiar with, but if you aren't already doing it, you need to do it to help prevent the pump. Starting off with supplemented oxygen. Now, this was something that I experimented with and was quite surprised. The company Boost Oxygen sent me a couple of cans to test out while I was climbing. And I was kind of skeptical at first, but the science sounded sound. Essentially what I did is throughout my climbing session, after I was done with the route, I would take a huff of some oxygen. And what actually ended up happening was on the sessions that I used the oxygen, I didn't get pumped. And this included bouldering, lead climbing, and top rope climbing. I tested it on all three. I was really kind of 
happily surprised with how I didn't get pumped. The next one is a different story. I was not expecting the results I got. I got these cooling cuffs from a company that are essentially little ice packs that you put on your wrists. Putting ice on your arms forces your body to send additional blood to that system to help with your body heat. First time I used it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if the cooling cuffs had to do with me not being pumped or if I'm just building my endurance. <laughs> and then the second session, I was like, huh, maybe it's a placebo. <laughs> and then the third session that I used it, I was like, okay, there's a pattern here. When I use these cuffs, I'm not getting pumped. So it's likely that you'll have the exact same experience. Next one should be obvious if, if you warm up thoroughly where you're doing like traversing, for example, is one of my favorite warm ups. You can spend five to 10 minutes on the wall warming up your hands and that's going to get the blood flow going to your tips. That way when you're climbing with your arms so far above your heart, you're going to have that blood flow already going and it's going to prevent that pump. Now it may not be as effective as these other two methods that I talked about. There's no money investment or anything like that. It's just 10 minutes of time that's totally worth it. When it comes to preventing tendon injury, you may have seen my mini series that I did with Eric Horst. We talked about the science behind your tendons, exercises you can do to prevent tendon injuries as well as nutrition. So if you watch that mini series, you may recognize one of these items in preventing injuries, and that is the use of collagen. Now collagen can be found in foods, but it is a little bit easier to get from a supplement. Studies have shown that taking collagen shortly before climbing is a great way of getting additional nutrients to your tendons while you're climbing, and it does help prevent injuries. Before I get into my thoughts on the collagens that I used, I did test two different collagens for this experiment. Let's talk about why you take it shortly before you climb and not before you go to bed. And the reason for this is because your tendons are like a sponge. So if you take a sponge and put it in a bucket of water, it will absorb water. But if you take a sponge and squeeze it in a bucket of water, there's going to be a significantly more water in the sponge. In this scenario, your tendons are the sponge and squeezing the sponge is when you actually put load on your tendons. So it helps get the collagen into your tendons a lot easier and a lot faster. I did 15 sessions of using the Fizzy Vantage product and 15 sessions using another product that I got from GNC. And what I found was there actually is a difference. This is just my personal experience and you should definitely test it out on your own. Next on the list is massaging your fingers. Every professional climber I've seen has some sort of video of them massaging their fingers. Akio does a really great video about her hand care and one of the things she does is a thorough massage. I actually have massage rings where you just roll them up and down just like a massage with your muscles. As you massage your fingers you're going to get additional blood sent to your fingers and that blood flow will bring in the nutrients. It will help detox anything that's in your tendons in your fingers. My tip for this one is to do it in the morning or leading up into your climbing session not directly after your climbing session and if you test this out on your own you're going to find out immediately immediately why. And that's because after you climb, your skin is a little bit more sensitive and these little rollers, they're a little pokey. So that is something that I would highly recommend. Next is massaging your arms. Let's not neglect your elbows. A common thing that climbers have is like a tennis elbow or a golfer's elbow. And unfortunately, I started feeling some of that while I was testing these different ways of increasing the amount of climbing that you do. So I did quite a bit of research. I tried taping my elbow. I did different pressure points. I did cupping on my elbow. And the thing that I found that helped the most with this, besides the exercises that you're supposed to be doing when you have these issues, is actually massaging massaging it out. It's the similar science behind massaging your fingers. You're increasing blood flow there. Plus I found that it helps loosen up the muscles around it, which can help decrease the pressure and stress that you have on these tendons. You can use a friction scraper. Hooper's Beta does a really good video on how to do that to help with these tendons. But I actually got my wife a massage gun for Christmas a couple years back and it is the best gift that I've gotten her for myself. <laughs> Essentially, when it comes to the massage gun, what I learned is the best thing to do is to massage out your forearm, then do your bicep and tricep, and after that, then you can go into the tendon areas and massage out those part of your elbows, avoiding any bones, like your elbow bone. And this really helped decrease the tension in my tendons. Before we go any further, if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and comment below with what tends to be your limiting factor with climbing more often. Increasing muscle repair. Every time you go climbing, you are 
tearing down your muscles and ideally you're building those muscles back up so that you can be stronger. Unfortunately, sometimes people are climbing so often that they just keep on tearing their muscles down and they don't get repaired enough to actually build back up. We're gonna talk about some things that I found and I've tested to really help with this. Now, the number one thing on my list, I actually talked to some professionals before doing this experiment and they recommended BCAs. BCAs are the essential amino acids that comprise around 35% of your body's muscle protein. They're typically found in food and supplements and help your muscles grow and recover. You can get BCAs from pretty much any grocery store. Essentially, they're an amazing way to recover your muscles and build them back up after you're done. Every time that I used BCAs after exercising, I did find that my recovery was more enjoyable. Unfortunately, BCAs have an incredibly sweet flavor to them. Some people actually really enjoy this and think it taste like candy. I'm definitely going to be using BCAs more often because they do have huge benefits for building your muscles. One of the cheapest ways to recover your muscles and start building them back up is by drinking protein shortly after your climbing session or what a lot of people do is right before they go to bed. That way your system, your body can start using the protein while you're sleeping to recover and build your muscles back up. Most research is based around whey protein. I'm actually allergic to whey so I wasn't able to test that. I did test some plant-based ones though and found that the nights that I would take the protein afterwards, I did feel my muscles were much stronger in the morning than they were the night before compared to the days when I wasn't using the plant-based protein. Some of the proteins, if you pay attention to the ingredients, have additional amino acids that help deliver the protein to your muscles a little bit easier. One thing that I added to my list of things after a really hard climbing session to help it me so I can climb the next day or just climb more often is a recovery tea. I really enjoy tea, so this was something that was easy to add or easy to test. It's called Slumber and it has melatonin in it to help you sleep so that your body can recover a little bit better and you're not waking up throughout the night. And then it also has collagen. So obviously before going to bed, it's not going to help your tendons a ton, but collagen does help build the protein in your muscle, which is why this is a great way to build your muscles after you've started climbing. When it comes to your overall muscles, tendons, and overall body wellness, it was drinking enough water. This video wouldn't be complete without adding this because a lot of people aren't drinking enough water, and I was one of those people. Water flushes toxins out of your body, it transports nutrients into cells, and helps regulate your body temperature and pH balance. Water also helps with muscle soreness and tension. Everything in your body requires water, so you probably need to increase your water intake. At least start tracking to see where you're at with what is a healthy amount of water. If you don't know how much water you need to take, multiply your weight by 67. So for example, if you weigh 100 pounds, you should be drinking 67 ounces. If you weigh 140 pounds, that's 140 times 60 equals 94 ounces of water per day. In addition to water, you need to be stretching. And this is one of those things that's hard to include in the video because I really struggle with keeping stretching in my regimen. Is a ton of research surrounding your body's ability to recover your body's ability to prevent injury, your tendons wealth, your muscles wealth, just overall body health from stretching. So it is something that you should be doing every single day, even if you're not climbing. And because climbing is a full body workout, you need to make sure that you're stretching your entire body, not just your shoulders or your hamstrings. Skin recovery. A lot of times we talk about muscles, we talk about tendons, and when it comes to beginner climbers, your skin is definitely going to be a limiting factor with how often you climb. The more you climb, the more durable your skin will become, but it is still a limiting factor for even advanced climbers. With that in mind, what are some things that we can do to help recover your skin faster or increase the durability of your skin so you can climb more often? The easiest thing that I have on my list is using some sort of cream at night, and there are a couple of different brands one I've been using a lot is Rhino Skin. They have a repair and performance. The performance one helps with the durability of your skin and you put that on about three to four times per week. For the times you aren't using performance, I use repair. The repair kind of softens it so it can recover better. Your skin does need elasticity to recover. If you have tears or something like that, then repair would be better. And it does exactly what it says it does. It helps repair your skin a little bit faster. I do really like the Rhino skincare line. I like how quickly it is absorbed into your hands so you don't have this greasy feeling afterwards, which comes from a lot of other hand care brands. In addition to at night, 
nights throughout the week. There is also skin cream that you can use right before you start climbing. An hour to two hours before you start climbing, you put on this cream on your hands. It takes a minute to absorb, but once it's absorbed, your hands are a little bit more durable, and I have noticed that. The one I used a lot for this experiment was Climb Skin, which is something that temporarily increases the durability of your hands. Plus it makes them a little bit more tactile, so you can be more like Spider-Man on your climbs and just really latch on to those holds. If you've gotten this far in the video, you're probably wondering what are those two methods she was talking about that is more hype than hell? Right now, we're gonna talk about those items. And really the biggest things with these is they are well marketed, but the benefits to cost ratio is pretty dismal. First on this list is a muscle recovery soap. I've seen a couple of companies come out with this recovery soap where you can just use it in your shower afterwards and it's gonna help your muscles recover. Now with these products, typically they have essential oils in them and that's what is working to help recover your muscles. With soap, you just wash it off afterwards and there's very little essential oil residue left on your skin for that topical application. Now I have done soaks with these soaps and they are more helpful, but I'd actually recommend just doing a muscle recovery Epsom salt instead. It's cheaper plus it's more effective. Instead of doing a soap that you're just going to rinse off, consider getting a muscle recovery lotion. That way the topical application will actually stay on your skin long enough to be helpful. Next on my list, I think it's been hyped up because these companies have been teaming up with pro climbers and so we've been seeing a lot of Instagram posts for it for example and that is icing your fingers. Now it's well known that dipping your hands in ice water helps get blood flow to your tendons which helps with tendon recovery. However you put a little tube on your fingers it is convenient because you can like swipe on Instagram while you have them on your fingers. It's no different than just dipping your hands in a bowl of iced water which is completely free so consider that if you have an ice maker or if you have ice tray and a freezer, instead of getting those little tube things for each of your fingers with ice on them, just put your hands in a bowl of cold water. Knowing how to recover is an incredibly important part of being able to climb more often. And with climbing more often, you are going to get better at climbing, especially when it comes to technique and endurance. But it's even more important that you are intentional with your climbing sessions. What you do during a climbing session is going to affect your actual gains. If you want to know what to do during your climbing session to get the most gains possible with the time that you have at the climbing gym, check out this video right here. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please be sure to give it a like if you did.